So I just have a few announcements for you this morning. Um, firstly, thank you for all those who helped on Friday. It was a good day with much fun. Um, so thank you for those who supported in any way. Program this week is as normal. Uh, newsletters are available at the back on the table. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday. And I'm hoping I've got this right. But we, if you're marching, if you meet before 10.30 at the Royal British Legion, because I think we, we march off at 10.30, um, so you don't want to be straddling at the back and running to catch up. And then we march towards the Cenotaph. So those that are not marching, if you'd like to meet us at the Cenotaph. And then this is followed by a service at St. Sedmus. So there will be no meeting here next Sunday. There's a few announcements this morning. Uh, the next one is the dates for your diary. Um, Food Pank are having a variety concert on Thursday the 12th of November at half past seven at Larne High School. Um, tickets are £7.50 and this includes a light kind of refreshments from what I understand. And we can get tickets if anyone is interested. And that's all the announcements. I don't think there's anything else. No, nope. that's good. This morning, our Bible reading is taken from Hebrews chapter four, beginning at verse twelve, and we're going to be we're going to be looking at verses twelve to sixteen this morning. So I invite you to open your Bibles if you have them now, because we'll be referring to them. The verses are interwoven through the meeting. I'm just now going to read the first two verses. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide in soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the hearts. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must account. And as we continue our show, I invite you to join me in singing, I'll stand for Christ, for Christ alone, amid the tempest and the storm, where Jesus leads our follow on, I'll stand, I'll stand for Christ alone. <coughs> And if you'd like to stand, if you're able, and we'll sing these wonderful words through together.
you'd like to take your seats just now. <coughs> this morning as we look at Hebrews, um, we'll be thinking around the theme of confidence. And our next song talks about this. And these verses, but linked to it is verses from Hebrews are reading from this morning. It's verse 14, it says this. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. And we know that we can have confidence in our great high priest, whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. So as we use this song, this song will lead us into a time of prayer. And round and about you, you should have a red piece of paper. Just if it's to hand. And we're going to be using that as we pray this morning. But let's sing together. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea. As we continue to look at our passage of scripture this morning, verse 16 reminds us of the confidence we have. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And maybe you've heard it before, the acrostic for the word grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. That our debt has been paid in full. And as I was thinking about this verse, about these verses, I was thinking about knots. Because I know that some knots are really helpful. Knots that tie a shoelace are extremely helpful and extremely useful. Knots that keep a ship close to land when it's mooring. Those are helpful too, for obvious reasons. 
But what about the knots that we tie within ourselves? How helpful are those? So as you look at your piece of paper, you'll notice that there is a piece of plastic string that has been knotted. There's a knot in it. And then to go along with this, there's this prayer that talks about the knots, the have-nots, the can-nots, the will-nots, the may-nots, the might-nots, the am-nots. And I invite you, if it's helpful to you, to take them away. Because I don't think it's helpful that we tie ourselves in knots, is it? Not when we have a confidence in Christ, our Saviour, who's pleaded for each one of us and continues to do so. So this morning, as we pray, maybe you might like to feel the knots, hold the knots, but I invite you, if you can, if you can read through the prayer together as we pray together this morning. Dear God, please untie the knots in my mind, my heart, and my life. Remove the have nots, the can nots, and the do nots that I have in my mind. Erase the will nots, may nots, might nots that may find a home in my heart. Release me from the could nots, would nots, and should nots that obstruct my life. And most of all, dear God, I ask that you remove from my mind my heart and my life, all of the am knots that I have allowed to hold me back, especially the thoughts that I am not good enough. Amen. When that voice perhaps tell us, tells us that we're not worthy, May we think on these things. Think on the things that we know to be true. We're going to continue in this time with an affirmation, not that God means it, but how great is our God. Sing with me, how great.
at this time in our worship, may we take up our offering just now. Thank you. May we look at verse 15 from Hebrews 4. And so far we've jumped around all the verses, but our reading is 12 to 16. And this is the last verse that we read. Verse 15, because I don't do it in order. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. I just want to pick up on the weaknesses. We do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses. And as I was thinking about this, you may notice the blocks that are sat just below on the table. It's a game of Jenga. Now, Jenga is a great, great game. I'm not sure if the gentleman would like to show us how it's done. Would Peter and Philip show us how it's done? They weren't prepared for this, so I'm, I'm grateful. Um, yep. Pull up a chair. Uh, Jenga is a great game. As you watch them play it, it's a game of skill, perhaps. Or it's a game of luck, depending on how you do it. The stakes are high with this one. Because you have to have the confidence and the daring to remove some of them. Because as they go through the game, they're going to make it weaker and weaker because they're pulling parts out, parts that are needed in order to be there. Jenga's weakness lies in its structure because together as one, when it's a complete set, it's stable. But as you can see now, it's losing its structural integrity. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No. And will they be daring enough to go through the bottom couple? Because the last thing you want with Jenga is for you to cause structural integrity. That's all right, one hand. <laughs> one hand. You got some cheaters going on here. One hand, one hand, one hand. Yeah, I'll do the trick fingers on this. Okay. Yeah, that's great. But you. That's that's it. That's fine. 
because neither of them wants to lose this game, do they? And it's it's a battle of wits. And oh, oh, no, no, oh, oh. If one of you can take one of the lower ones, though, and purposely try to make this unstable now, otherwise we could be here all morning. It's amazing because sometimes even if you take the lower ones, it still it still can keep its structure. Take the lower one, Philip, please. Yep, keep on taking the lower ones. Because my point is that's it. I was wondering how long that game would go on for. Thank you both for demonstrating Jenga and I know that you lost on purpose, Peter, so thank you for that, because we'd have been here all morning, because you, you guys were really good at it. Yeah, super glue with Jenga would not work if you wanted to play. But this game got me thinking, because what if the pieces were us, were us as a church, as we build up with Jenga the layers? Our foundation is strong. I'm not sure if you can still see it, but the three bricks that made the foundation, they're still there. They will forever remain there because although the top topples over, the foundation stays strong. And we know that as a church, our foundation is laid on Jesus Christ and we cannot have a stronger foundation than that. But if we were the pieces... That makes each one of us really important. It means that no one, as we know, is more important than one another. But if we start taking pieces out, we will become weaker. And perhaps that's how we're feeling this morning. Some of our weaknesses, they can threaten us, can't they, as a core? And I wonder if you want to think just now, what are the weaknesses that threaten us? And how do we counteract them? So that unlike our Jenga block, that we continue to remain strong. And the great thing about Jenga is that if we had two packs here, you could keep building and building and building. Because you can never finish. You can never finish a church. We won't be complete until Jesus comes once again. But may we take heart this morning. May we take heart knowing that each one of us is important to this church. That we're integral to it. That when we're not here, we're missed. Because we all have our work to do. And some of it we know it's seen, and there's a lot that even us as the officers, we do not see. And we are grateful for that. We are grateful for the work that goes unseen and what is seen. Because without it, we couldn't function as a church. But just now, as we've shared things and as we've talked about things, let's pray. Let's pray over the things that threaten us as a church. But also, may we take heart. May we be encouraged that we're important. Let's just pray just now. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, Lord, we're mindful that we're low in number. We know that our friends are missing, Lord, for whatever reason, whether it's sickness, Lord, or something else, you know. And Lord, we just ask your protection upon us, Lord, particularly now as we... We may be feeling quite vulnerable, Lord, quite discouraged. Lord, may you protect us from the gossip, Lord, from not being able to trust one another. May this place be a sanctuary, Lord. May we trust one another. May our roots go deep into you, Lord, but deep into each other, Lord. We do not want to be a shallow church. We want our love that binds us to hold strong, Lord. Because we know that when we're bound in your love and we're binded together, Lord, we're, we're a powerful force in your name. And so, Lord, we lift each other up this morning. 
we lift up all that threatens us and we ask that even us as individuals, Lord, may we not do the devil's work for him. May we go from this place also encouraged, Lord, because as we've seen in the Jenga, Lord, we are in important parts in this church and it does not matter who we are, officer, soldier, friend, adherent, someone who comes once a month, it does not matter, Lord. We are an integral part, each one of us, none important than the other. And so, Lord, we place these things into your holy name. And we'd ask that you would hear and answer our prayers, Lord. For we ask in Jesus' name, the great high priest, whose name is love. Amen. Now, often when we come to prepare in a meeting, um, I pick a song, and then I realise we don't have the music to go with it. And the song I've chosen this morning is Tell Them in the East and in the West. Tell them of the one you love the best. Tell them how to find the sweetest rest, leaning on the love and Saviour's breast. Do we know this song? Yeah. The only music I have is a tune book. To anyone who can read the music. And um, I'm trying to think why I chose this song. Do we know this one? Do we know this one? This one? Yeah. I think we could probably read it then, perhaps. Would that be easier than sing it? And in the West, tell them of the one you love the best. Tell them how to find the sweetest rest, leaning on the love in Saviour's breast. Tell them all about the dear old book. Tell them there is life just for a look. Let this banner be unfurled, Christ for the whole wide world. Tell them of the baby in the manger laid, sent from heaven above. Tell them how for he was a ransom paid, just because of love. Tell them with your lips and by your actions too, and with flag unfurled. Tell it out with a shout, set it out with a shout, Christ for the whole wide world. To the beat of drums make none that the Saviour King has overthrown. Tell the rich and poor, the sad and lone, tell his power to everyone is shown. Tell it to the people you may meet, tell it in the hall and in the streets. Let this banner be unfurled, Christ from the home wide world. Tell them of the baby in the manger lane, sent from heaven above. Tell them how for them he was a ransom paid, just because of love. Tell them with your lips and by your actions too, turned with flag unfurled. Tell it out with a shout, tell it out with a shout, Christ for the whole wide world. Tell it to the young and to the old, tell them they may all be warriors bold. Tell them of the shepherd and the fold, 
Tell them of the heavenly harps of gold. Tell it with a clarion voice so clear. Let the story ring as far and near. Let this banner be unfurled. Christ for the whole wide world. Tell the men, maybe in the rancher they sent from heaven up. That's the same verse. So the moon, baby, is a ransom pain just because of love. Tell them with your apps and by your actions, Tim, and with flag unfurled. Tell it as with a shot, tell it as with a shot, Christ for the whole wide world. That was really good. Does everyone recognise it now? No? I really must apologise for anyone who's listening on the internet because, oh bless them, that was. I chose it for the last line that said this Tell them they may all be warriors bold. That means that we must be warriors bold too. If we're telling others. And I was reminded of these verse in 2 Timothy. I've written it down and I've, I've lost it somewhere. But it talks about that we do not have a spirit of timidity. But of power in his name that we may be warriors bold and share to others that they may be warriors bold too. I thought was going to bring us the message this morning. I'll be honest with you, um, later towards the end of last week and as, as I was preparing some thoughts for this morning, I got to that stage where my sermon was too long and uh, and I was trying to, to cut back on some things and, and do some editing to it. And then I actually realized that by doing that, I made it even longer than I had already. But um, I feel this morning that I'm not actually going to, to read it sort of as, as I prepared it, but rather just share some initial thoughts. Because I think a lot has already been said this morning, uh, which we can take away with us and and pray through and, and think through. Um, but I think there are one or two sort of uh, key things just to, to highlight this morning from what we read in these verses. And, and really the first thing is that the Bible is a living word, isn't it? It is very much alive. Um, it's an eternal word. And it, it helps us when we need that little bit of encouragement it brings that guidance, that protection, that reassurance. And I'll be honest, sometimes there are days I read it and I think it's just words on a page. Whereas there's other days where it really speaks into my life. And I'm sure there's a passage of scripture for us all that we can relate to. Either a favourite Bible story or something that speaks into our lives. Something that we kind of use as an example to follow. As a foundation for our lives. And I'm sure if we had time, we could go around and, and speak, speak about those for ourselves this morning. I was reminded of the opening verses of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. This is the word which we are called to communicate. And that was kind of the, 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 the thinking that came into my mind at the beginning of the week as I was uh, praying into this passage and, and thinking it through and, and doing a little bit of studying into it. Because we are communicators in all that we do. We are communicators, whether it be verbal communication, letter writing, sending a card, a text message, an email, that whatever we do in one way or another, we are communicating something, a message from ourselves to somebody else. And 
this is the message that we are called to communicate. What we find in the Bible, this message of love, this message of forgiveness, this message of Christ's redeeming act, sacrificial act for each one of us to be in that relationship with God through him. Yet sometimes when we when we go around town or we go around and we, we hear news and, and different stories, we begin to only think and hear the negative stuff. And I think there's enough negativity in the world. We need to be people who communicate a positive message of salvation. I was uh, doing a little bit of research this week into communication and there is a speech and communication specialist um, who did a, a, a presentation, I think a couple of years ago in Scotland, and uh, his name is, is Julian Treasure, and he speaks of four powerful foundations which we, can, which we can use when we communicate, because it will help us communicate more effectively and it will be more helpful and more positive in, in the message that we, that we are giving. And, and the four words are honesty, authenticity, integrity, and love. So when we communicate, what he's saying is that we should communicate a positive, truthful message in a way that is ourselves, try not to be somebody else, and in a way that will not hurt, harm, or bring down the receiver or anybody else. So when we communicate, we communicate something which is true in a way that is best for us. We can't try and pretend to be somebody else. And communicate in in a way that will be helpful to the person listening or the person receiving that message. The word of God is alive and active. We, we believe that. It is a living word. And the Salvation Army as a church is very much alive and active. And I believe that we combine the two together so that this, this church, this group of people who God has called us to be and raised us up, not just here in Lyon, but all over the world, are promoting this, this word of God, the Bible, which is a, an alive and active word. And we do that through our speech and, in, and through our actions as well as we've mentioned already. And the other thing that was kind of uh, stood out to me, and Amory has, has briefly touched on this, is Jesus is the Son of God. And as we are preparing our, our thoughts for Christmas... And we can't help but uh, see that that is very much on its way. It will be here in a, in a few, in a very short period of time. The Son of God, this title, the Son of God, affirms Jesus' divinity. His name means Saviour, identifies with, with humanity, with his humanity and ministry on earth. And in now. Our fourth doctrine, the Salvation Army, it says, We believe that the person of Jesus Christ, the divine and human natures are united, so that he is truly and properly God and truly and properly man. And as, and as the writer says in, in Hebrews, Since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. So, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So he knows what we go through. He knows what it's like to be joyful and happy. He knows what it's like to cry, to be upset. He knows what it's like to be tired he also knows the importance of, of prayer, meeting with the Father. He knew when to be on his own, when to be teaching and training his disciples. He knew when to be in prayer, when to rest, when to be away from the crowds. So whatever experience we go through in life, 
whether we're on the giving end of, of communicating something or whether we're on the receiving end of hearing something, something which sometimes might not be very pleasant. Jesus knows what it's like. He's been there. He's been through it. Jesus knows what it's like. He's been tempted by the devil. Took him away and said, I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. But he knew the living word said to worship our God. We will only worship our God who is the true proper object of religious worship. And when we follow Jesus' example, even when we feel weak, even when we feel tempted, even when we feel that we can't do it, his strength is enough to get us through. He understands. In this concluding verse of chapter 4, the writer reminds us that we can approach God's throne with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And I think it's fair to say that we all have a time of need from time to time, don't we? We all have a time of need. We're created to be with each other. We are not uh, beings that are created to be sort of isolated. We are created to be together. So what we face in life, we don't face alone. And here we are reminded that Jesus Christ can give us the mercy and grace that we need. Christ can understand what we're going through. He can offer compassion and pity on our lives and situations. Grace has been described as the divine influence which will impact our strength to resist temptation and endure trials. So the argument of God being so far away, not knowing what's going on, is meaningless. Our God is an ever-present God who lives in our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit and it is through his living word where we find that strength and that encouragement. Christ came to bridge that gap between humanity and God so that we can be in that relationship with him. And now he is exalted high above all other names seated at the right hand side of the throne of God. So communication can be dangerous, but it can be helpful. And the living word, the Bible, is our message to communicate. Jesus, name above all names, the great high priest, he is the one in charge, he is the one who gives the word, who calls us into action, who leads us into battle and the one whose authority is above all of ours. Jesus knows for us, knows us, he cares for us, he can relate to us because he's been here before. What we go through, he's been through. And he continues to be with us as we journey with him through it again. And we can communicate, of course, to Jesus in prayer. As the song says, take it to the Lord in prayer our communication to God. And of course we open ourselves up to the message that Christ gives us as we say, Lord, I need you. Help me through this, please. He will say something to us in return to comfort us and to help us. So as I say, there's a lot more in these passages but I just feel I just needed to to just say a few points this morning and we can approach God's throne of grace with the confidence the confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need very often we want to see change we want to see things differently but we find it a little bit uncomfortable for ourselves to change. 
and God will, will help us through that. For whatever situation he puts us in, he will equip us to be in that situation. I just invite you to sing through a song just now, please. The song says, Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and honour, I behold your face, singing, What a faithful God have I. And this chorus speaks of this wonderful God that we have, this faithful God who is faithful in every way. And we can testify to the faithfulness of God because we have experienced his mercy and his, his grace and his love in our lives. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love and forgiveness upon our lives. We thank you for the mercy and grace we can find, the compassion we can find when we come to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. You have made us. You've made us in your image to be in relationship with you and each other. And we pray, Lord, that each day that relationship will go stronger. 
Lord, be with us as we continue to grow, continue to grow in, in grace and grow in love for each other. Be with whatever is happening in our lives in these days, Lord. Be with the people in situations that are in our hearts and minds. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful in every way. Amen. Amen. And in conclusion, I invite you to sing our closing song. Make the world with music ring, while with heart and voice we sing praises to our God and King. Hallelujah. Tell with no uncertain sound to the nations all around of the Saviour we have found. Hallelujah. Tell the world of the Saviour we have found. Talk about Jesus, his living word as it shines through our lives. Um, I invite you to stand, please. Uh, there's, a few introdu- there's a bit of an introduction to this, to this arrangement and to each verse, so we'll see how we, we get on as we go through. Uh, it's coming, I think, yeah. benediction together. Jesus, so dear to us. Jesus, be near to us. Jesus, give ear to us, each as we pray. Jesus, whatever betide. Jesus, be friend and guide. Jesus, be by our side, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And God bless you all.